Hello and welcome to another series of Student Science. We've been away far too long so it's good to be back. This week we're going to show you some experiments you can do with stuff you find in your own house. And that is mainly... Custard. <laughs> <laughs> This is a science show on URN. Student Science. So, for this first experiment, we're going to show you how custard can be a solid and a liquid at the same time. Here's one I made earlier. Oh, there's a spoon in there. So, now I have my bowl of ready mixed custard. Now, you're probably wondering what's so special about it, but it's this. I can pick up the custard with my bare hands. Has it gone wrong in cooking? No, it's because it's a non-Newtonian fluid. Now, non-Newtonian fluids are slightly different to things like water and syrup, where when you heat them up, they become runnier. This stuff, custard, the more pressure you apply to it, the stiffer it gets and becomes almost like a solid. So as you can see, I'm making a nice ball here. But if I were to suddenly stop, it becomes a liquid again and you get this lovely goopy mess. This is why when you tap ketchup on the back of the bottle, it doesn't come out, because it's a similar substance. While George is playing in the kitchen, I've decided to take a more scientific approach and have headed down to the lab. In this shot, we can see standing waves on the surface of the custard. To do this, I've put the custard on a speaker, attached it to a signal generator and recorded it using a slow motion camera. By poking the surface, we can create tendrils of custard, which support themselves and solidify in response to the vibrations coming from the speaker. When we vibrate the speaker at a lower amplitude, we get the standing waves, but when we vibrate it at a higher amplitude, that's when we get the tendrils. Occasionally though, they break off and escape. You can try this for yourself at home. And now back to the kitchen, where George is trying to set fire to things again. So, to set this experiment up, it's fairly straightforward. First thing you've got to do is put a hole in the bottom of your tin and to make the hole small enough to fit the rubber hose in whilst keeping it fairly airtight, as so. The next step is to get your candle, light it and put it in the bottom of your tin. After that you have to load your tube of custard powder. Do this by merely dipping it in the pot of custard. And when you're ready, just give it a blow. Right, whilst we have another montage of slow motion explosions, I thought it'd be good as time as any to explain what's going on. Custard is packed full of energy, so when you apply enough heat to it, the energy is released as light and more heat. This is also known as fire to you and me. However, if you just dropped a match into a pot of custard powder, not a lot happens. That is because there isn't enough custard in contact with the flame to start a reaction, so by blowing it into a big dust cloud, we increase the chances of the fire taking hold. So, a gram of custard has about 600 square metres of surface area in total, which is quite a lot, plenty enough to catch a light and produce these lovely fireballs. George! <laughs> <laughs> 